Today I want to give you five tips and products on how to accomplish a flawless, long-lasting makeup. Hi, I'm Desi Stark and welcome to my channel where we talk about luxury beauty, skincare and lifestyle products. The first tip I want to give you is on priming your skin. And I'm not really talking about your skincare so much, I'm talking about a foundation primer. So let's assume that you have applied your skincare, you have applied your sunscreen. The next step or the first step in your makeup application would be actually applying a foundation primer. All the foundation primers used to kind of extend the longevity of your foundation also in most cases, depending on the primer, they will make your foundation look a little bit better, maybe a little bit smoother. And I love a lot of primers. I have a lot of them in rotation. I have been discovering more and more. But there's one technique that cannot be beaten. I have, I have not found anything better that prolongs my makeup or makes my makeup look flawless, pretty much regardless of what kind of foundation I use on top. These products that I apply as a primer and actually use two products in conjunction to make that flawless look, I have not found anything better than those two products. And I'm talking about these two products. I use them as a primer. I use both of them together and I will show you and I'll tell you exactly how I apply that. So this is the Sisley Double Tensor. This is a lifting priming serum. Why I love this. This is a very light gel consistency as you can see in the application. This is a lifting serum but it's also a primer. So you're getting so much from this one product. You're getting the lifting effect. It doesn't really firm or you don't really feel the, the tension of your skin although it's called double tensor but you do kind of throughout the day feel a little bit more put together your skin feels a little bit tighter but in a very subtle beautiful way so you're already getting that the lifting effect so this is an anti-aging serum but it's also a primer when you apply it your skin feels very very moisturized even if you have oily skin, by the way, you can you can use it. If you have very, very oily skin, you can skip this product, but I would still apply it even if, um, if I had oily skin, to be honest, because this product is so thin, it sinks into your skin pretty much immediately, but also it gives a little bit of a grip, just a very light grip on the skin, which you need for the foundation when it's when you're applying your foundation after that. Now, I have normal to dry skin and this is perfect for me because it gives me just kind of that a little bit of a boost in hydration. Not a lot though, but as you can see when I'm applying this, it does, my skin starts to glow just a little bit. It doesn't look wet, it just glows. I have been using this uh, priming serum for a very long time. I cannot even tell you how many times I've uh, repurchased this uh, this product. It's absolutely beautiful. This is actually my favorite, favorite primer. And again, I have so many of them. Now you can stop here and this gets the job done. It's, and it's still a beautiful primer on its own. But if you wanna take that extra step and make your skin look completely flawless and your foundation look completely flawless, then you go over with this powder and this is a Sisley powder. This is called the Blur Expert. This is how it looks. Obviously, I have been loving this product. Now, you can apply this product two ways. Now, technically, this is a powder, but it's such a thin consistency. You can barely actually um, see it. It takes a little bit of effort actually to pick it up if you want to use it as a buffing powder or a setting powder and you technically can. I do not like it as a setting powder. It breaks my, my makeup apart for some reason. I only use it as a primer on top of the Sisley Double Tensor on top of this. How do I apply this? Well, technically you can take a buffing brush like this one. This is a Sonia G buffing brush. See how it's... Um, kind of cut in the on top so you pretty much you can just press the product and then buff it into the skin um, pretty much anywhere but my preferred method is actually when I take a buff this is a just a, a lapery buff you can you can use any buff I use a lot of lapery products so I have 
hundreds of those just all over the house. So I will take a puff and as you can see, I just gently tap it and press it a little bit. Then I always, and I do that with pretty much any powder or even eyeshadow, I always gently kind of uh, test it on the skin just to even out the powder on the puff and then I just press it into the skin. I will mostly focus on this area here around the mouth, pretty much anywhere you have lines. And I also, I do not apply it here, as you can see, but I do apply it here. Yeah, um, do not fear, this will not sink into any anything. Um, this is a very interesting consistency. This powder is almost like a moisture powder. So it doesn't really set anything. It just um, smooths everything without technically drying down. So it's the most amazing product, but again, for me, it only works as a primer. And as you can see, already everything is, is smoothed and perfected and lines are gone and the skin is pretty much perfect at that point. Now, if you want, you can technically uh, skip the remaining of the makeup. If you have a light day, if you have a no makeup day, uh, you can just go on with your day. But for the purpose of this video, I wanted to do a flawless, long-lasting makeup. So let's continue with the makeup application. So after we have applied our foundation, I apply my foundation absolutely everywhere. I bring it even around my, my eye area. I don't focus on the under eye or my eyelid, but I will put some foundation there again. I apply my foundation usually with the sponge. I will bring it down my neck as well, but the next step is actually a little bit more important because we're talking about concealer. I'll give you my three favorite concealers, three that I have been using for a very, very long time and they usually stay my top three. I love a lot of different concealers and I use a lot of different concealers, but if you were to ask me what are your best recommended concealers, I will always give you these three products and I'll show them to you right now. And also the method of application because I have a specific technique that I wanna show you exactly how I'm applying my concealer so it doesn't crease, it doesn't crack, it doesn't sink into any lines and it's also very, very, very long lasting. Just to set the scene, if you're anything like me, I have dry under eye area. I also have the obvious concern for someone my age which is lines and, and wrinkles and also I have dark circles and sometimes they become very pronounced obviously depending on my lifestyle choices if I sleep too much or too little or if I don't drink enough water but I always apply my concealer the same way and I have tried all the other techniques that everybody else out there is coming up with for some reason, I always kind of go back to default, which is the way that I apply my concealer. This is the best way for me. So my favorite concealers are, the first one is this one by Sisley. This is kind of medium to full coverage. I buy it in shade one, which is perfect for me right now, but usually in the summer months, I get a little tanner and it's a little too light for me. It's beautiful, it's a beautiful shade because the shade actually has a little bit of a peach undertone. Now this is one of those concealers that it does have an applicator. I never apply it directly with the applicator. I usually will squeeze a little bit on, my, on the back of my hand and I will just spread the product where I need it and then I will spread it even more with a dampened sponge. That's how I apply this concealer. It doesn't crease, it doesn't move, it doesn't oxidize, it doesn't go anywhere. It's actually a beautiful, beautiful concealer, especially if you have a dry under eye area. This is just perfect for you. My second best concealer is this one by Coletta Paul. This is the clicky pen one. It comes with a brush and you dispense it by clicking the, the back of it. This is in beige. That is my absolute perfect shade. If I'm a little darker in the summer months, I usually go to almond, but beige is my universal shade. This is a light to medium concealer. It's also very creamy and it's very, it's a very thin consistency. So it's also extremely moisturizing. I love this product. These three concealers I have been repurchasing for a very, very, very long time. And again, they're my top three concealers of all time, considering that I use so many others. 
and the concealer that we are applying today and I'll show you my special technique on how to apply it so it doesn't crease and it's very very long lasting but my best absolute favorite concealer is this one this is also by Cladabaugh this is the other concealer by Cladabaugh I have been repurchasing this concealer for probably 15 years it's always my favorite concealer, it's always kind of my default, I always go back to this one. Recently it got reformulated, I have been through three different reformulations of this uh, concealer. They're very, very close to each other comparing to the one from 15 years ago, this one is the same. Um, if anything, the, the difference between this one and the previous one, this one is SPF 27, the previous one was uh, SPF 25, and uh, there's not a big difference between this one and the one before. If anything, I have to tell you, I think I, I liked the old one a little bit better. I think it was slightly more hydrating. I know this is not a very popular opinion, but Maybe because the old one was, you know, called kind of old for, you know, it's been in my collection for a while and maybe the, the formula got a little softer. I'm not really quite sure, but it's ultimately the same thing. This is still my favorite concealer. Now I want to tell you exactly how I'm applying this concealer. Because I do always spread my concealer with a dampened sponge, especially this one. And you can also apply it with, uh, with your fingers because the warmth of your fingers usually just kind of helps it a little bit. This is, again, one of those concealers that is very dense. So you do need to warm it up a little bit. I find that, that the quickest and best way for me is with a dampened sponge. And it doesn't matter which one. I happen to like the Sonia Kashuk one. It's kind of inexpensive and you can have 30 of them. You can use it for a month and then throw it away which is usually what I do, but that's how I apply it. Also, the next step of the concealer application and setting process is actually very, very important. Now, I only set my concealer. I have only found two spectacular powders to set my concealer. I mean, I can set it with anything pretty much, but there's two special powders that just accomplish magic under the eye. One of them is the Pat McGrath, what are you called? blurring under eye powder and I buy it in shade light. I don't know how many times I've repurchased this. This is pretty much the only product that I use to set my under eye area. Now please remember that the way that you see your concealer sitting under your eyes, once you set it, that's how it's going to stay. That's why it's important that right before you were to set your powder, and I set it by the way with the same dampen sponge. I will just dip it here as you can see. I will tap it on my skin on my skin on the back of my hand because I want kind of the excess powder to go away. I don't want it to be very saturated because you need very very little powder technically. But right before that I want to make sure that all the little creases and everything underneath is smoothed out again and then I will set. And yes, I do set everything around, even my eyelids. With this, I do apply a little bit of a concealer on my eyelids as well, just to prep. I use it as a primer, pretty much as an eyeshadow primer as well. So I do set everything. I even go down the sides of my nose. Sometimes I may go down or around the, the mouth, whatever is remaining on the, on the sponge. The second powder that I, that I like, and, and again, I only like two powders. The second powder that I like is the Clara Paw powder. This is the refining powder. This is a limited edition. I think I bought it for last year's Christmas or, or whatever, but they do have the regular one. So this is a very finely milled powder. I apply it the same way. You need a very, very little amount. But this is um, very, not only soft and finely milled powder, but it's also very I don't want to say moisturizing because it's it's a powder, it's a it's an oxymoron if I tell you that a powder is, is, is moisturizing, but it is. It's not a drying powder is what I'm trying to tell you. So these are the only two powders that I like for setting my, my under eye area. Now that the under eye area is set, I continue with applying all of my makeup, pretty much the remaining and I will list everything that I have on my face down below in the description box, but it really doesn't matter actually what you apply and how apply it and in, in what order. 
right? I mean, you can apply any kind of bronzer you want, any kind of eyeshadow you want, uh, whatever you want to pile on your face. Apply the remaining of your makeup, and before you apply your highlighter, I usually apply my highlighter absolutely as a last step. So, but before you apply your highlighter, what we're going to do is we're going to buff. Now, I know that you've already probably set your face with one powder, you have a, a bronzer, you have your, your blush, you have a lot of makeup on your face. I would suggest that you are very light-handed with your powders and, and bronzers and etc. Actually, on, on the bronzer and the blush, it doesn't matter because now we're going to buff. Now, what exactly is buffing? Well, buffing is yet another powder, finishing powder usually, that you use a buffing brush. And my favorite one is this one. This is Wayne Goss 11. I have a few of these brushes because actually this is the only brush that I like. A traditional buffing brush is actually like this. But I find it, for buffing, I find it a little too harsh. You may distribute a little bit too much product. So I do like this one. This is also a buffing brush, but it's fluffy. It's really, really soft. I love this brush. I have a lot of different finishing powders, but there's one finishing powder that I have been using for a very, very long time. And this is the best, the absolute best buffing powder. This powder makes whatever you have applied underneath, this powder makes it better. So even if your makeup does not look good, you've applied it, your foundation is not uh, right, it doesn't look good, it's, uh, you can see your lines, you can see pores, you can see it's just not looking good. You use this powder as a finishing powder, it fixes everything. So technically that's why, if you've seen any of my previous videos, that's why I say I can make any makeup look better just because I use this buffing powder at the end and I'm talking about the La Prairie Skin Caviar Loose Powder. Now this powder is infused with Skin Caviar which is the proprietary anti-aging ingredient for for La Prairie and I absolutely love it. This is a giant size. It takes me a very long time to go through this. It doesn't matter how much I, I use it. I think it's it's it probably lasts you years. I mean, I go through one of these in maybe 12, 14, 14 months, maybe sometimes even more. This is translucent too. It does have a shade a little bit and it has an open close kind of a mechanism here so you can close it so it stays fresh but nothing's wrong with it. I have another one in shade Translucent 3 which technically I can use only in the summer months. It's a little bit deeper than this and I've had it for a couple of years now and absolutely nothing's wrong with it. I think what I do is you can see I take this brush and I pretty much buff it everywhere. I buff this powder all over my skin and everything looks kind of better because there's no harsh edges between your bronzer and your and your blush and etc but also again this 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 powder just makes everything better now immediately you will not see it because it takes 15 20 minutes for this and the next step that I show you um, and we do will make it even better but this powder is just um, just amazing. I always say that this is my, my best powder and again it's also a skincare product. I love it. And now at this point after I have buffed I usually apply my highlighter. I'm crazy about highlighters. I don't use a lot of glowy stuff, glowy foundations, glowy powders or anything glowy but I go crazy with the highlighter and I have a very large collection of, of highlighters. After that, now it's time to, to set. And I set with these two products and I'll tell you why. My skin recently has been kind of dryish on the dry side. I need these two products. Now, this product came out, I think, maybe a year and a half ago or so. I can't stop using this product. This is the airbrush. Flawless Setting Spray Charlotte Tilbury. This uh, makes everything better. I mean, this is this is what gives you the longevity of your makeup, but it also kind of blurs a little bit 
um, there is a, a an airbrush quality to this uh, this uh, the spray now the problem with it is if I'm on the dry side and if you have dry skin this will tighten your skin so you will kind of throughout the day you'll probably feel it and, and you have to go a little crazy with the spray it's not just one two spritzes I mean you have to you have to go there so that's why I combine it with the La Mer Mist I love this product I was freaking out at some point uh, a few weeks ago maybe a month ago because this product was completely gone I don't know what um, I think it sold out but I was able to find it, I think it's back in stock now. I think I bought this one from Nordstrom and I bought another backup from Selfridges. But I combined these two products. Now if you have oily skin, you may want to skip the La Mer Mist. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. If anything, it will help all the powders and everything kind of melt. Which you can accomplish with only this. But maybe you can use just a little bit of this and then you follow with, with this. Now, if you're on the dry side, even if you're very, very, very dry, as long as you use those two products, especially this one first and then this one, you'll be fine. You're not going to feel the tightening effect because this is moisturizing but undetectable. This is, um, this is a very, very good product um, from, from La Mer. And the last step, which is kind of important as well, and I never, ever, ever skipped that step, I dry my face with my Dyson hair dryer and it's not so much the drying part that does the gets the job done is also the warmth so I'll put it on the highest heat setting and I will dry and warm up my face now wait two minutes and see how your face looks because you'll be amazed your this has melted into all of your powders the heat and this powder go very very well together and I can pretty much if I do these steps and I most of the time I do all of them actually because I do have long days this makeup actually uh, lasts me 16 hours actually I just came back from a business trip and it's one of those that you're stuck in a conference room for a very very long time and then at night you go out and you have drinks and, and dinner with, um, with, with people and I had gotten up at 4 o'clock, applied my makeup at 6, then jumped on the plane, got to Vegas, was in a conference room the whole day and finished at about 11.30 at night my makeup didn't move at all and I didn't reapply I didn't the only thing that I actually applied throughout the day was uh, my my lipstick this is it nothing moved nothing broke apart it's just phenomenal what these uh, little five steps can do for your makeup not only will make you look flawless but also it will give you the longest lasting makeup that you can have now, if you have any tips or suggestions, I would love to hear them. Please send me a note below. But this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon. Bye.